right, hello Algebra 2 students. I hope you had a great April vacation. Um, this is Mr. Fleming coming to you with another lecture on rational functions. So today we're gonna be learning how to graph rational functions. And before we do start, I wanna do a quick review. So remember that the word rational just means, you know, a function that has a fraction in it. So something over something. Um, in the past couple of weeks, we learned that a, you can find a vertical asymptote um, when the denominator is equal to zero. You also, we also learned about horizontal asymptotes, which depends on the degree of the numerator and the, the denominator. So if the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, you're going to have a horizontal asymptote at zero. If the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator, then you have to divide the leading coefficients. If the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, there's no horizontal asymptote, but there's a slant asymptote, which is the numerator divided by the denominator using your box division, and it's usually in a linear y equals mx plus b form. All right, so without further ado, let's graph. So our first example is x minus 4 over x plus 3. Um, so our first step, we're going to look and see if we can factor it. So, mm, nope, can't do anything further than that. All right. So then we're going to find out all of these things. Once we find out all of these things, we can probably go ahead and graph with no issues. So x-intercept. Okay, x-intercept, always remember that that's when y equals to 0. So you can set the whole thing equal to 0. So 0 equals x plus 4 over x plus 3. Well, newsflash, if you multiply both sides by x plus 3, you're going to be left with 0 equals x plus 4. And then you know that x is going to be equal to... Um, oh, goodness. This is actually going to be x minus 4. Yep. So apologies there. And then so you know that your x is going to be equal to 4. That is your x-intercept. Okay, now we're going to do our y-intercept. In this case, we are going to make x equal to 0. All right. So if we make, if we make x equal to 0, we have 0 minus 4 and then 0 plus 3, right? So then that's going to equal y equals negative 4 over 3, which is what? Like negative 1.6, something like that. Not too bad. All right, so I'll give that a nice circle. So we have our x-intercept and our y-intercept. Something I forgot to say, the x-intercept just set the numerator equal to 0. And that's going to be your x-intercept. All right, vertical asymptote. Remember that we're looking at the denominator, so which is x plus 3. So 0 equals x plus 3. That means we have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 3. All right, horizontal asymptote. So let's see. We're looking at the degree of the numerator and the denominator. The degree here is 1, right? And the degree here is 1, so they're equal to each other. So we look at the leading coefficients, which it's just 1 over 1. So that means our horizontal asymptote is at y equals 1, because we have 1 divided by 1. And there's no slant asymptote. Oh, I forgot. There's no holes in this either, because we didn't cancel anything out. Okay, so now we have enough information to graph this. Step one when you're graphing things is always to do the asymptotes first. So I know I have an asymptote at x equals negative 3. So I'm just going to find that on my little handmade graph right here and draw a dotted line at like so. All right, this is great. And then my horizontal asymptote, which is at x equal, or sorry, y equals 1. So again, a dotted line to represent that horizontal asymptote. Beautiful. Okay, so now we're going to go to our x and y chart um, and just kind of graph some points. The first points that we have are our x-intercept and our y-intercept. So we know that our x-intercept is at 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4, right there. Beautiful. And then our y-intercept is like at negative 1.6, which is like there, or something like that. 
All right. And so when we're choosing points to graphs, you want to make sure to graph things that are close to those asymptotes so you can kind of see the behavior. All right. So I'm seeing that we have two points here. I'm guessing that our, our things are going to be kind of moving that way. So what I want to do is I'm going to have, I'm going to check this point right here. I'm going to check at negative two because I want to see where the graph is coming right around here. I'm going to check also after the asymptote. So I'm going to check at negative four over here and negative five. All right. So to save some time, I've done these already. So what you do is you plug these into the equation and you solve. You can use a calculator. So I find this. All right, so here were the values I got. So I got negative six, four, negative two, which means we're down, let's see, two, three, four, five, six. Wow, okay, we're, we're down that way. So I know that the shape of this side is gonna look something like this. See how it's kind of like touching, almost touching? It's in like kind of the boundaries between these two asymptotes. And then my other one, so negative four, go all the way up to eight. Woo. And then negative five is at 4.5, which is like one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it's gonna be like mm, right around here. All right, so then I can assume that the graph is gonna look something like that. Not too bad, right? So that's the first graph. All right, we're gonna go into our second example, which we have x squared minus nine and then x plus two. So our first step is always to make sure that we can factor it. So we know that this is a difference of squares, so I know right away that's gonna be x plus three, x minus three, and over x plus two. But it seems like we can't cancel anything out, so that means that's fine. That means we're gonna have no holes, which is, which is cool. All right, so step one is to look at our x-intercept and then our y-intercept. So for our x-intercept, Remember, that's when y equals zero. And I told you before that it's just the numerator equal to um, zero. So I know that zero equals x plus three, x minus three. So I know that the x-intercepts, we're gonna have two of them. One at x equals negative three, and then one at x equals positive three. Circle those, all right. For our y-intercept, you have to set x equal to 0. So you can use, you know, it doesn't really matter. You can use the original equation. I'm just going to do that. So 0 squared minus 9 and then 0 plus 2. All right. So then we have negative 9 over 2. So our y-intercept is going to be y equals negative 4.5. So I suggest using decimals here, decimals, excuse me, because that's gonna just help you graph a little bit more. Okay, so we know that there's no holes on that on two vertical asymptotes. So I see that our denominator is x equals two, so we're gonna set that equal to zero, y equals x plus two. And that means we have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative two, right? Okay, then the next thing we look at the horizontal asymptote. So we have to look at the degrees of our equation. So we see we have a degree of two up here and a degree of one in the numerator. So the numerator is greater than the denominator. So we have no horizontal asymptote, but we do have a slant asymptote. And to do that, we got to do some good old polynomial uh, division. So we're going to divide this x Sorry, this x squared minus 9, divide that by x plus 2. So take out your box. So real quick, I'm going to do x plus 2. And here we go. I'm going to put the x squared in this box right here. Okay. And then to get that, I multiply x by x is x squared. Then that would be 2x. All right. And then I notice that there's no x term, sorry, there's no x term in here, so I have to cancel that out. So it should be negative 2x over here, and right, negative 2, and that'll be negative 4, and we have a remainder of 5, but remember that the remainders don't really matter 
for slant asymptotes. So that means that our slant asymptote is going to be y equals, oops, sorry, y equals x minus 2. Okay, so we have all the information we need to graph this now. So step one, as always, is to draw your asymptotes. So our vertical asymptote is at x equals negative 2. So 1, 2, and draw that dotted line. And then for the slant asymptote, this is where your algebra 1 skills are really going to come in handy. So you're going to have you're going to have to graph this y equals x minus 2. Remember that your, let's see, and it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm not looking for perfection here. Um, you can, you're going to, x intercept is at negative 2, and the slope is at a positive 1. So I'm just going to do some slants up here. So up 1 over 1, slant, up 1 over 1, slant, up 1 over 1, slant, something, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> not, not perfect, but you kind of get the idea. You only have to graph a couple points. Sound good? So we have our vertical asymptote here, slant asymptote this way. All right, so again, I've just saved you some trouble by graphing things. So the first thing we want to do is our um, x-intercepts. So we know that we have 3 and negative 3. So 1, 2, 3, perfect, and then negative 3. Mm -hmm. All right, so those, oops, sorry, those are our asymptotes right there. Um, positive 3 and negative 3, and then our y-intercept was negative 4.5, which is down here somewhere. So 2, 3, 4, 4.5. All right, so again, so 3, 0, 0, 4.5. What I'm going to do again is do some of the, what is it, some of the points that are around the vertical asymptote. So in this case, I'm going to see what negative 1 is like because that's close to the vertical asymptote. And then I want to see something after this um, intercept. So I'll do, um, you know, I'll do like negative 4. All right, so when I do negative 1, I find that negative 1 is going to be like negative 8. And then when I plug negative 4 in, I'm going to get mm, something over there. So basically, negative 1 is down here. And so here you go. It's gonna, And then this is going to be kind of like a mirror image, which is kind of cool. And there you go. So you have... But this is what it's going to look like with a slant asymptote. All right, we have one more to go. This one is a, my favorite, so we'll see how this one goes. All right. So the next one. Okay. So we have this one. 2x squared plus 10x minus 12 and x squared plus x minus 6. We got to factor it first. So first step, I see this is a GCF, so take it out. So 2 x squared plus 5x minus 6 and make sure to pause this video um, if you want to take a moment to take some notes that is totally okay please go at your own pace and then you know just factoring through this I'm gonna get I see that this is a what is it positive 6 and negative 1 that'll give me that so we have 2 and then x plus 6 x minus 1, and then the bottom is going to factor to x plus 3, x minus 2. All right, so then I do a quick look over. Can I cancel anything? No, I can't. So that's going to mean that there's no holds. All right, so here we go. Same old story. X-intercept, set the numerator to 0. So that means if we have a numerator is 0, 2, x plus 6, x minus 1. If I divide the 2 on both sides, it's just going to be 0 divided by 2. So we don't worry about the 2. Focus on the things in the parentheses. So we have x equals negative 6 and then x equals 1, which will be our x-intercept. So we'll have two of them. For the y-intercept, remember, you just have to um, set x equal to 0 and plug in 0 for x. So 
you know, just kind of go through this real quick. So we have 2, we have 0 plus 6, 0 minus 1, over 0 plus 3, 0 minus 2. We're left with 2 times 6 times negative 1. Good boy. And then we're left with, what is that? 3 times negative 2. And then if you do all this math together, you're going to get the y-intercept is uh, 2 because you have negative 12 divided by negative 6. And here you go. All right, vertical asymptote. Well, you had to set the denominator equal to 0. So 0 equals x plus 3, x minus 2. So that means we have two vertical asymptotes, x equals negative 3, and then x equals 2. Sorry, that was x equals negative 3. Apologies. Horizontal asymptotes. Well, we look at the... Um, the degrees. I see I have an x squared at the top, x squared at the bottom. Great. So then we look at the leading coefficients because it's going to be, so this is 2 and then this is 1. So 2 divided by 1 is 2. So our horizontal asymptote is um, y equals 2 because we have 2x squared divided by x squared. If that's just 2. And there's no slant asymptote because the degrees are equal. All right, we are ready to graph with all of this cool information. So re remember, as always, um, start with your asymptotes. So in this case, we have two vertical asymptotes, x equals negative 3, so just do... And then x equals 2. So 1, 2... All right, beautiful. And then our horizontal asymptote is that... Two, so like just like that. Remember, your asymptote should always be these nice dotted lines. Okay, so we first go to our um, x-intercepts and y-intercepts. We know that the first inter the first intercept is at x equals negative six. Oh, which is going to be over here. Apologies there. So that's our first x-intercept. And then we also have an x-intercept at 1, so that's going to be right there. Perfect. And we look at our y-intercept, so that's going to be at 2. So 1, 2, right there. Okay. Beautiful. So we have all of our um, x and y-intercepts on our graph now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a table, just like so, and I want to look at the behavior around the asymptotes. So the points that I'm gonna kind of, I wanna kind of see first are like this negative four right here because it's near this asymptote. I'm gonna wanna see this negative one because I wanna see what happens over here. I'm also gonna look at three and four, which are after this other asymptote. So again, I've done these all ahead of time. So plug these into your equation, solve them out, and I find that I get this. So 3.3, Positive 3.3, 6, and 4.2. So if we look over here, we get, so we're at negative 4, and then we're at 3.3, which is like down here. Okay, so this probably means our graph on this side is going to kind of hug those asymptotes, just like that. In the middle, okay, I found a negative 1. It's going to go up to 3.3, which is 3.3. Okay, so again, hugging those asymptotes. And you might be asking, wait, Mr. Fleming, doesn't this cross the asymptote? And I would say yes, but the asymptotes really only matter as you're going to the infinities. All right, and then the last ones we have 6 and 4.2. So we'll go up to 6, and then 3, 4, 5, 6, and then 4.2, 3, and 4. So then I have an idea that this one's going to look something like that. Isn't that gnarly? So this is the whole graph. That was a long journey, but I hope you followed along. Make sure to pause if you need to. Um, hope you're doing well, and thanks for watching. Have a great rest of the week.